Holy Spirit, we welcome you. You're the teacher. I ask you to help me to encourage your sons and your daughter in the area of keeping their mind under control. I would call, now, not having the screen up here to where you can't watch the scriptures, I really want to encourage you, if you're normally lazy and watching up here, you need to start bringing your Bibles. So you actually know where stuff is found in the Bible. So when you get home, you're not lost. Amen. Electronically, we can cheat. I find myself doing it sometimes. And I'm like, I know it's in the Bible somewhere, but what's the address? You ever feel like that? All the scriptures I memorize, I never memorize the address. And people will say, where's that at? I'm like, one moment, please. Like electronically, Google knows. <laughs> I want to give a very good one. If you will, please put your hands together for Pastor Val from End Time Harvest Ministries that's with us tonight. I honor you. Bless you. Doing a powerful work not only in the Jackson County area, in our area, but overseas too. And uh, the, I so envy the, the wells and stuff that they do because that leaves something that gives life. There's a spiritual life. But there's three things that agree on the earth. That's the blood, the word, and the water. And uh, so I've seen some dirty water wells in some places where I'm like, ah, I'll go a couple of days without drinking before I'll drink that. So I thank you. I want to talk to you now tonight about controlling your thinking. In today's events, the spirit of the world and all that is going on, from COVID to the vaccine to mandates to... Uh, cancel culture, you name it. Even Christians, as I talk and travel in the world, I see people, they're ready to fight you over some of this stuff. And I'm like, it's really, really immature to be like that. Jesus says, "Come, you know, let's sit down and reason, but let's come together. If you want to talk to me about political stuff, about this stuff, I'll just tell you no. God, Jesus didn't worry about the Romans when he was here. He said, I'm bringing a new kingdom. So I'm, I'm to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to uh, argue with you about uh, vaccines or, or COVID or any of these things. Uh, you, you know, my, my, my theology on that is if you got hair under here and hair under here, you can make your own ideas, okay? That means you're an adult, right? I know it's kind of weird, but you're not paying attention, so I thought I'd get your attention. <laughs> One of the best ways that I've seen in my 36 years of being born again that I bring my thoughts captive is I speak to myself. Now, you crazy people sitting here, I know you talk to yourself. If we followed you around or put a recorder in your car or in your house, we'd probably hear some crazy stuff. But what happens is if you get mad at somebody and then you begin to meditate upon it, the law of focus says whatever you focus on gets bigger. So uh, I want to share with you tonight because some people say, well, then what am I supposed to think about. Thank you for asking. And because I'm going to tell you, the Bible says, if you have your Bibles, if not, make sure you bring them next time. Philippians 4, chapter 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. That should just shut down a lot of your minds. Because you, uh, people tell me, my mind just is like a runaway train. It's only a runaway train because you let it be. Yeah. If you're a note taker, write this down because you need to learn this. The spirit realm communicates to us through our thoughts life. Now you can try to act like there's no devil if you want to, but I travel the world and I was just in Texas and there were witch, witches in, in my prayer line. They manifest demons come screaming out of them and, and uh, the elders in the church said, what, what was that? <laughs> they, they didn't know and I was just in Detroit some similar things happened. A guy started screaming and crying. My dad poured blood on me, tried to make me a high Satanist priest. And they're like, what, what, how come we didn't know that? I said, well, I have an anointing on me that irritates devils. You thought I just irritated you, but it's actually your devil. <laughs> oh, come on. We just pinpointed something, didn't we? Here I am. Say, here I am. <laughs> come on. Say, I got junk in here. Oh, you didn't repeat that. Oh, what's up with that? The state of your success in life is determined by what you think on, meditate, and or dwell. 
the, I told you before, the law of focus states what you focus on grows. And who you listen to determines your self-worth. If your mom, your wife, your friends, your co-workers are saying things that doesn't agree with God's word, it can affect your self-image or worth. I recently was talking to my wife and she was giving me all these statistics and I said, stop it. I don't want those statistics. Those statistics are going to affect my faith to something I'm getting ready to do and I really don't. She just cracks up laughing to me. I'm like, ah, you know, to me, some statistics are negative. I don't need them. She just see personality, right, Rachel? Oh. <laughs> and they have to, they have to gather all information. But because they gather all information, they gather the negative too, and then eventually they come to a place where they're going to have to purge. You think they're they're flaking out or being crazy, but no, the, the body, the born again body was not created to house negative stuff. Wow. So you you you've got to give the C personality. Uh, I started noticing that one of my grandkids. What was that you just squirted in your throat? Well, I got a sore throat. That was, that was uh, chloroceptic spray. Oh, why is your throat sore? Why is this? Why is that? Why is that? I'm like, oh my gosh, not another C in my family. Oh, Lord. Yeah, it was Kellen. It was your child, C. <laughs> and, and I started, I need to pay attention because if there's a C personality, then if I correct them, they're going to receive it as criticism. Yeah. If my one, if my, if my one little guy, if I tell him his spelling words are wrong, dude, he just it, it breaks his heart. I'm like, oh my gosh, not, you're not a C. To, how could you not be? Your dad's a C. Your grandma's a C. Oh my gosh. But whoever he listens to will determine your self-image or worth. If what people are saying to you doesn't line up with the Bible. You need to very politely try to change the conversation. we we'll just inform them, look, the way you're acting or talking is really negative, and it's not bringing us any success in our life. Now, some of you, 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 you ask personalities, you don't like to confront people or do stuff. But I'm telling you, if you're going to have success in life, you're going to have to make sure that you begin to agree with heaven. Amen. If you don't begin to agree with heaven, then the Bible says in Amos 3, 3, how can two walk together unless they agree? So if God's word says one thing and you say another thing, then you're not walking with God because you're not in agreement with God. You have to... J.C. Yeager. <laughs> okay, baby. I'll call you later. Top. Step in the back and find out what my baby needs, honey. <laughs> I guess I forgot to turn the volume down, didn't I? Probably bring me something from the Apple Festival. <laughs> So sometimes you have to confront them and tell them the, the way they're talking and what they're saying bothers you. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained a brother. It doesn't say go, go tell 15 other people so they can pray about it. Right. Quit the fake phone prayer line. Yeah. Yeah. Or now the Facebook prayer line. Yeah. Trying to use it as an excuse to expose people's stuff. Amen. Okay? Just because you happen to come upon someone and see something doesn't mean God revealed it to you now that you're going to be the one that, that do this. First of all, do you have authority in their life? Do you have a relationship with them with, with a received something? You really just need to keep working on yourself. The Bible says until you bring yourself to obedience, you can't bring somebody else to obedience. Now I get down the road, someone pulls over in front of me. I'm a cleric. <laughs> So I have to pull my thoughts captive. <laughs> I grew up drinking well some water, so I can say some redneck things. <laughs> so I'll be like, in the, the name of Jesus, be blessed. <laughs> and they've told me, go first or you're number one. So I give them the finger. <laughs> be blessed. <laughs> yeah, some of you guys, you, to the pure, all things are pure. Some of you are pure, are you? <laughs> But I can start to think on something. Man, I don't have money in my account, and I need to go here, and I have to say, out loud. Now, you've got to do this out loud, because it's an exterior spirit that's speaking to you. The spirit realm communicates to you in your thought life. Whether you want to believe it or not, you go ahead and live a crazy, insane life if you want. But I'm going to, I'm going to be crazy, but I'm going to be crazy for Jesus. I, I have to say, I pull my thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ Jesus and to his word. Yes. Repeat after me. I pull my thoughts captive. Captive, to, the to the obedience of Christ Jesus and to his word. And to his word. You begin to 
do this. Now, you might have to do it 15 times in a day, but eventually that little tormenting spirit is going to say, well, I lost ground here. <laughs> because you'll get that thought and you'll think it's your thought. And if it's your thought, you won't fight your thoughts the way if you knew it was a devil. Yeah. You and the devil are the only one that will speak negative about God's word. Yeah. So you got to get yourself in shape. Yep. Wow. you got to get in God's view. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Start praying in tongues. Get into the word and read the word so you can say, wow, man, my mind, I've been hateful. I've been negative all day. No, wait a minute. I will think on things that are pure, that are just or holy. If it's anything of good report, I will think on them. Start saying that out loud. Train yourself. Program yourself by speaking the word of God. We know words have power. Go to Proverbs 18:21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Listen to this. If words have power, then thoughts will too. Wow. Yeah, that's true. Wow, that's good. Thoughts are unspoken words, not yet verbalized, yet still heard by your soul. Yeah. That's almost like having a set of, you have your, your uh, earbuds in or having a headset on. No one else can hear it, but you're hearing it. And if you think on it, if you think, oh, they don't like me. Oh, this person don't like me. Every time I go, they just don't look at me. They make an excuse not to be there. If you start, does that line up with God's word? Why are you thinking it? Wow. I'll have people that'll come on my prayer and they'll say, well, you know, uh, I believe my sickness is of God. And I said, well, then why are you in my prayer line? <laughs> Well, I saw everybody else being healed, and, and, it, and it's, it's, I said, so you're, you're saying this is your cross to bury. This is what God told you to do, and this he gave it to you. He said, yeah. I said, well, how, what kind of medicine is a doctor giving you? And they'll, they'll spit it right out and say, well, if God's giving this to you, why are you going to the doctor to get healed? Right. Why are you resisting God? Yeah. You see how ridiculous that is? Yes. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I'm a, I, I was a wicked stepfather, but I am the world's greatest grandpa. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you see, my grandkids even call me while I'm preaching. <laughs> but I would never give my grandkids or my kids sickness or disease Amen. to teach them something. Right. I would buy them a book or, or say, I'm going to sign you up for this class so you, so you can learn from this. So death and life and the power of the tongue. When Jesus told the people, he had a huge crowd following him, this is what he told him. He said, hey guys, you've got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Well, they didn't understand that. And you know, that's very paganistic. So the Jews like, you're weird, dude. So they left. Jesus looked at Peter and them said, are you guys going to leave me too? And they said, where are we going to go to those, to someone that has life in their words? Wow. Do your words have life or are you a person that's always Always negative about the pastor. Always negative about the church. Always negative about your job. Always negative about your family. Yeah, I got some family members that I could be negative about, but I'm not going to be. Yeah. I got there's this little thing called JPay that when someone's in prison they can send you e emails and stuff. And just for a camera, I'm like ding, and I said, oh my daughter sent me a message, and she says, I'm really fighting some things in my mind. Hey dad, could you send me some scriptures? I'm like, wow. <laughs> come on baby, <laughs> isn't that cool? And my mind went blank. I couldn't think of a scripture to send her. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? <laughs> so I'm going to be sitting up all night. i got to fly out in the morning. I'll be sitting of scriptures to thinking of scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4, 29 through 32. As you're looking it up, let me repeat some of my statements. If words have power, then thoughts will too. Thoughts are unspoken words, not yet verbalized, yet still heard by your soul. Many people have already been defeated before ever speaking a word. Take heed what you listen to. Television programs, music, other people, yourself, others. And definitely, people will tell me, well, I believe I'll say, what scripture are you standing on? Oh, they can't give me a scripture. I said, if you, if you don't have scripture for what you're doing, and you really feel you're, you're an on-fire Christian, then something's wrong. Every direction that's given to you by the Spirit of God, He will back it up with Scripture. Amen. If you don't feel that, have that, you say, just Lord, you know, I believe this is you, but I need Scripture for this. 
And the Holy Spirit knows the Bible and He knows the address. <laughs> I may not know all the addresses of the scriptures, but He does, doesn't He? He'll get it to you one way or the other. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace, say grace, grace. unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. One of the greatest ways that people grieve the Spirit of God is by giving their opinions. Because wow. almost always your opinion does not line up the Word of God. People say, I know that's what the Word says, but the minute someone says but they just deleted everything behind it I had one lady says well I know the scripture you're saying is correct but my experience I said your experience comes from being double minded having doubt and unbelief come on somebody and I said it with all the love I could muster come on somebody <laughs> This 30, I, I, it's hard, I find it hard to get past verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Okay, listen. Come on, talk about it. If you're a Christian, talk about it. and you cuss, you're wrong. Amen. Right. If you're a Christian in this church, and you cuss, yeah. you'll probably get rebuked by me. Yeah. Yeah. Get a beautiful, wonderful people, person, pastor, but... I'm a redneck elder. Yep. <laughs> you should not be cussing. Amen. You should not be getting drunk. Amen. You should not be shacking up. Amen. I don't care what the culture of the world is. You can't have Christian drug dealers. I tried to be that when I first got infatuated with Christ. Pay tithe. God had to catch me stoned to get in my wallet. What's he got to do to get in yours? <laughs> When I tell that story, I think of my brother, Steve, who's the one that heard Copeland preach that if you tithe on your business, God will bless your business. That's why we started tithing. I was in uh, uh, Detroit, and I'm in worship, beautiful worship going on. I look over, there's a guy with long hair and a beard, looks just like my dead brother. Wow, wow it messed me up, man. Whew. You ever see something like that? Someone you love, you're like, oh my gosh. Check this out. Verse 32. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. How fast do you want to be forgiven when you confess your sins? You want to be forgiven fast or you want God to put you on the wedding list? Could you see, Father, I messed up. Forgive me. Message coming back from heaven. Well, we're sorry, but due to COVID, we have everything back ordered. Everything's on delay. <laughs> Praise God that COVID can't affect forgiveness. Come on, somebody. Amen. It shouldn't affect yours. Amen. Good. We, we want forgiven quick, but we almost put people in time out. Yeah. Bless those that curse you. If you don't bless them, you got to say, Lord, bless them. He knows it's a faith statement. That's not a fact. But you got to start somewhere by faith. And eventually the feelings will follow. When I wrote a book on the power of forgiveness. And one time I was reading another book by another guy, R.T. Kendall out of uh, England. And he said, God told me, did you really forgive him? He goes, yes, God, I forgive him. He had wrote a book too. He said, I wrote a book on forgiveness. He's telling God, like, you know, God gave him the message. I wrote a book on forgiveness. He said, then pray that I will bless them. Oh, Jesus, I don't know if I've really forgiven them or not. <laughs> That really takes pulling your thoughts captive. I pull my thoughts captive. I see them, I hate them. I see them, I want to cut their tires. I pull my thoughts captive. That's not Jesus. I don't have scriptures to cut their tires. I don't have scriptures that I, oh, someone said they had a diagnosis with cancer. Oh, that's terrible. Mm. There was a guy many years ago. I'm not going to say his name. He said God's instruction to him, God's calling on his life, was to expose this church when Pastor Dave was here. To expose it as a call to him, and a terrible thing. He went around and he trashed Pastor Dave. He trashed this place. And David just forgave him. Yeah. David just forgave him. The guy would never stop. Ended up getting cancer of the tongue and had his tongue removed. Don't mess with God's people, man. Amen. Wow. Wow. 
Look at you, you old gracie people. You're like, God wouldn't do that. Well, then why did Ananias and his wife drop dead when they lied about their time? You don't want the power of God like it was in the first century church. Because some of you be walking up here. We'll be dragging Bible, uh, bodies from the, from the offering. Is that, is that the tithe off on you? Well, yeah. Wouldn't that be crazy? Paul was preaching. The guy tried to interrupt him. He said, be struck blind. God's serious about getting people saved. And, and he shares about you not playing games. But unless you pull your thoughts captive and start commanding your thoughts to align it with the Word of God, you're never going to mature. You're never going to grow. You're never going to advance. And I just want to encourage you. I know some of you, man, I used to, the Bible says, an evil man runneth when no one pursues. I used to be so scared when I was a drug addict and, and I had, had phobias and fears and anxiety that some of you would never even believe that I had. But I would be in bars tripping on acid. There'd be a group of people coming out of know, and I knew that was there to beat me up I would go run in my car drive out to I lived in the country and I would climb underneath my couch and lay there for hours with the couch sitting on top of me dude that's weird that's fear fear has torment so I'm talking about pulling your thoughts kept oh my kid will never get better they're a mess remember that scripture where the guy came to, to the Lord and said my son is sore vexed and a lunatic how many of you prayed that for your kids <laughs> Oh, nobody's raising their hands. Now let's have an altar call for liars. Come on, you know you have. My son, my daughter is a lunatic. I prayed it. Lord, send someone with the Holy Ghost to get that girl. And now she's the one doing Bible studies. What can I do? I failed. She's in that condition. I haven't known her that long, but what, what, what have I done? Then your mind starts worrying about being a failure. Then your mind starts wondering, oh, I lost that job, I'm a failure, I'm going to lose every job. Is that the word of God in your mind? Is that the way God wants you to think? Oh, I'm probably going to get this disease. I'm going to get this pandemic. I'm going to die. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Somebody touched me. Oh. Wow. I was on the plane and I bumped somebody with my elbow. And they're like, oh my gosh, have you been vaccinated? I said, <coughs> No. I had to do it. I repented later. <laughs> I pulled my thoughts captive. Do you see the point I'm making? Yes. Some of you married people have been mad at each other for years. And you're waiting for the other one to apologize. It may not happen. Wow. You take right care. <laughs> C personalities have to gather a lot of information before they apologize. We're still waiting from 15 years ago when she wronged me. But if you ask her, I wronged her. That's not her personality. But if we pull our thoughts captive, it says, hmm, don't grieve God. Let, let me retrieve those truths. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even forgiving one another. Say forgiving one another. Forgiving. Say that includes husbands and wives. You shook your head, but you didn't say it. I know you're with the rough one. I know that. She's with the rough one. Be ye kind to one another, tender hearted. Tender hearted? Come on. Some of you, now you're, I see your, your body language is in a rebellious stance. You don't want to hear me. You, you just shut me off. Let me read it to you in another translation. Same scripture. Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps. Let each word be a gift. Don't grieve God. Don't break His heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for Himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. Wow. Mm. We even see that in the body of Christ when people don't agree with each other. Oh, the Holy the tongues ain't for today, this. And, and you'll have the... Uh, <laughs> I start to say something else. Pull that thought captive in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you'll start doing that out loud, I pull my thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You'll see that they begin to shut up. You can't see them. Maybe you can't feel them. But, I mean, I get some thoughts sometimes. I'm like, I'm done, but I ain't that done. <laughs> I'm not going to thinking about someone because I know God will punish me. 
So I've been this walk too long. So I have to say, I pull my thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ Jesus. This is all oh, this is going to fail. Oh, this person is going to die. Uh, and I have to pull my thoughts captive and say, the time I spend being negative in my mind, I should be spending time praying in the Holy Ghost. I should spend time praying in grace and mercy and saying, God, I, uh, Psalms 107 20, I send your word to heal them. I ask you to touch it. Lord, I thank you for debt cancellation. God, give me witty ideas and invention to make more money. Instead of saying, oh man, because of the politicians that's in there now, taxes going up, gas is up, I'm not going to have enough money for gas. No, my God knew all this stuff was going on. He ain't broke. He takes care of me. He's taught me how to keep she money. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. She got a whole lot of he money. So we ain't, we ain't even going there. <laughs> but she's allowed to. You know, I was telling somebody the other day. I, I, I recently bought a vehicle. And they, they said, you got good credit. And I started to say, well, I like to pay my All of a sudden, I thought, I travel all the time. My wife pays my bills good. Come on, somebody. I right, thank you. That you're very frugal. Amen. But, but, but I had good credit when we met. Come on, somebody. I want you to know that God wants you to start thinking the Word of God. You can't think the Word of God if you don't get in the Word of God. Amen. You can't just be a hearsay Christian that you try to live your life by what you hear the preacher saying, and then you only remember two-thirds of it, then you misquote it, and then you quote it out of context, and then you're wondering why the stuff don't work. You can't, uh, I would not advise you on trying to get healed on somebody else's revelation. Amen. I would not advise you on trying to get wealthy off of someone else's revelation. Amen. You, you must understand, because see, in pulling your thoughts captive, someone will tell you, oh, it's, they said, oh, you're one of them prosperity preachers. I said, yes, I am. I tried being a poverty preacher and it didn't get me anywhere. <laughs> But there can't be a false message unless there's a true message. There can't be counterfeit money unless there's real money. There can't be false prophecy unless there's real prophecy. I was recently at a place where a lady, her parents took personal prophecy out, just out of whack. And because of that, she just wants no use. See, when stuff gets wrong, you don't choose no use. You teach correct use. you got to be a parent. Some people, they're like, have a deliverance ministry. No, 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 no. You have a minister of reconciliation. And when it comes to demonic uh, things there, you deal with it. I don't have a healing ministry. I have a minister of reconciliation. My job is to reach the world. But when sick people seem to get drawn to me. Come on. I'm like, I, I, I would enjoy just having an afternoon with some healthy people. <laughs> but I'm just... <laughs> I was in Detroit. You know, they come up and I had blood poured over me. And I was, a, you know, sacrifices made on top of me. And, and I, I have mental instability and I, I have this disease and I have that disease. One lady had a, 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 a bandana on and her hair was gone from her chemotherapy. And I didn't know it, but she had a lump pressing through her skull that, that protruded right there. She said her pain was over a 10. When I prayed for her, I put my hand on her and I just started to pray. And she looked at me and she's like, what the world? I'm like, what? She goes, how did you take the pain away? Wow. I said, would you really like me to tell you, man? She goes, yes. I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I just stayed dumb. But when I turned the service back over to the pastor, I'm walking back to my book table. Her husband says, come here, come here, come here. She's sitting there crying. I said, what? She said, there was that much, that far across here. That just, it's totally gone. Wow. Come on. But then I told her, please download the teaching I got for free on my website, How to Keep Your Healing. Because see, if your thinking is wrong, it'll take you to a place of depression. Yes. Uh, I'll say something to people, wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's deep, it's really funny. But no, listen, if you're fighting depression, you went there. Yeah, that's right. That's I'm not condemning you. Amen. You went there. That's right. But here's the key. If you went there, you can leave there. Yes. yes. You didn't follow Christ there. But Christ will take you out. Yes. There's a scripture that says, Now unto him who's called you out of darkness. Why is that scripture in there? 
because many have not come out of darkness yet. Even Elijah, who was in the Old Testament, the minute Jezebel witchcraft came against him, he ran 85 miles out of her jurisdiction and hid in a cave. And God stood outside and said, ¿Qué pasa? What are you doing in there? What are you doing in the darkness? Some of you have used faith to get to the land of blessing. Now you've quit using faith. You stay in the land of blessing. You're just like some of the, I forget the name of the tribe, but they were getting ready to go into the promised land. And they said, Moses said we could have this land right here. And Joshua said, yes, you can. Moses did say that. But you can, you can uh, build a wall city for your kids and your wife, but you have to go in the promised land and you have to have, help all your brothers and sisters fight before you come back and, and settle down. So we've got to get our minds pulled captive. We've got to start thinking like first century Christians. Forgiving, loving, praying for the sick. It's so beautiful to hear people praying for Eb and, and praying for other people. I've got one of my partners, I'm flying to Minneapolis tomorrow, had a stroke, has a 50 cent size spot on her brain. Uh, her arm and leg just started working again. She's talking, not that great, only because I got her doped up. <laughs> her husband says, she's saying goofy stuff. I said, well, drugs will do that to you. And so I believe that I'm going to lay hands on her, or these will all do it, and that this next time she has an MRI, the spot's going to be gone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because see, when you know your purpose, mm -hmm. your purpose will empower you if you participate with your purpose. You can know it, but not participate. If you know your purpose and participate with, with it, it will empower you to escape premature death. Wow. Jesus knew his purpose. His first sermon, they were going to throw him off the hill, and he walked right through him. That's the vision God gave me the night he healed me of COVID. He said, he knew his, I just had a knowing. He knew his purpose. He could walk through it. And all of a sudden, I realized, I felt, man, for almost two weeks, I've thought about nobody but me. And how woe was me. I got up and made, made a list of names. Started walking back and forth, praying, breaking the power. You see, when you're passive, You've been trained since a little child. Oh, honey, you're sick. Well, lay down. Let me put a blanket on you. Cold rag on your head. Oh, would you like some ice cream? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds good. I'm, I'm coming to an end of a three-day fast. Anything sounds good right now. Is that a mint or something? <laughs> I got flavored water. Hang on a minute. Check this out. Lay down. When the spirit of infirmity is done with you, then you can get up. Wow. When we're older, <laughs> honey, I don't feel good today. I'm going to call the bus and call in sick. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, it's my boss. I was telling him I wasn't coming in. <laughs> Listen to this. What thoughts dominate you will control you and will eventually terminate you. I've seen people have rejection so bad that there's a spirit inside them saying, everybody rejects you, everybody rejects you, everybody rejects you. And then it has a partner spirit. No, I'm not talking their spirit. I'm talking about just flying around, sitting on their shoulder. Remember that little thing, an angel and a devil? This is just a devil, not an angel. And it's say, like, nobody likes you, nobody likes you. And then there's a spirit that works with it. It gives other people like, that person's so full of rejection, I ain't petting their devils. And you just fed their devils. Wow. If you think someone's got rejection, you should invite them to lunch. Yeah. Let me show you that the church loves you. Wow, that's good. See, Ron, I've been waiting for 30 years. <laughs> You've never invited me out to lunch or to dinner. <laughs> I'm suffering from rejection. And I know you can afford it. <laughs> He's thinking what to say. What do I say? What do I say? <laughs> <laughs> This is my brother-in-law and sister-in-law. <laughs> 
Good comeback. I, 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 I enjoyed that. Because I really, really threw you under the bus right there. But the statement was true. I forgive you. <laughs> oh, my. See, we, we, we laughed to get you laughing there, but start thinking about what thoughts dominate you that cause you not to participate in the church? Wow. To not get in and do your part. Because the Bible says when each person supplies their part, then the body grows. Amen. You got so, so much warfare at work that you can't do nothing. Well, that's understandable. Well, let's pray with you. Let's stand the gap for you. Maybe you can't do something for a season. But eventually, you can't always be a spectator. You have to eventually be a participator. Amen. But you've got to pull your thoughts captive and allow yourself to think like Christ. When you become born again, your spirit becomes born again. But your soul is not saved. Right. Amen. Don't forget who you're talking to. I've studied this stuff for 30 years. Your soul's not saved. But it says that the engrafted word of God is able to save your soul. Amen. What does that mean? Thank you for asking. It means when you can get your soul thinking and speaking the same way God does. Wow. Wow. The minute you're about to give your opinion... Maybe that explains why some of you have not been put on the ambassador list yet. Wow. Because ambassadors are not allowed to give their opinion. Right. They went everywhere preaching the word and the Lord working with them, confirming his word, not their opinion. He wasn't confirming them saying, I'm doing miracles to them because they're okay and they really got their act together. God confirmed Christ because he was okay. He was perfect. But at that point it stopped. Now... God confirmed the word in flesh. Now Jesus is confirming the word if you preach it. See, some of you don't understand. You probably, you've never maybe preached with an interpreter. It's really interesting. I was, someone asked me the, uh, in Detroit, when's the first time you preached? I said, well, the first time in Africa I preached with an interpreter. I did so bad that I had a solid bruise up and down my leg. He goes, why? I said, because the preacher, every time I didn't stop, he'd hit me in the leg with the microphone. <laughs> Boom. Boom. I'm like, oh. I'm like, what well, you hit me with? You got to let me interpret. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> The reason I said that is because each and every one of you is actually God's interpreter. That's good. That's good. But if you're not pulling your thoughts captive to obey God, think like God, you're giving a false interpretation. Wow. That's wow. Good. When Moses came down from the hill and saw all the people that he had <laughs> worked with and brought out of Egypt was used by God. Mm. He got mad, and he took, people make a joke and say, he's the only guy that broke all Ten Commandments at one time. He took the tablets and smashed them down. And boy, he was mad at them. And God said, you misrepresented me. And I was wondering, why, how could he misrepresent them? How come God wasn't mad? Because without the law, there is no sin. Right. Wow. And he had not made it to give it to him yet. He broke it. Wow. And that's why Moses never made it. He let him see it, but he never let him go into it. Because he said, you have misrepresented me. That's right. Make sure that you don't let your opinion be the representation of God. Amen to that. Make sure that it's done through love. God's word is not magic. Jesus is not a genie. You're going to pray for some people, and they're going to just flat die. And you're not going to want them to die. I'm the baby of the family. I didn't want my mama to die. I prayed for people and they died. And then people get mad at God. You didn't perform the way I wanted you to perform. I'm taking my baseball bat and glove home. <laughs> Many people want to serve God, but on an advisory capacity only. Wow. Yes. Wow. Start listening to your prayers. Are you praying prayers of advisory? I listened to a series by Pastor Dave on prayer. I'm like, shut my mouth. <laughs> I was the fourth member of the Godhead. I was going to tell Jesus how to get this done. <laughs> I would pray scriptures. I was preaching 
That's not prayer. Don't don't pray, preach. Yeah. Try to let everybody know how much scripture you know. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Right. When I got done listening to the, the, the Pastor David's thing, I'm like, Lord, I come to you and I bring my wife before you. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. Now I shut up. <laughs> Because I had a whole lot of advisory to give to him about the woman that I begged for. I used to say, give her. God said, you mean the one you begged for? And then he said, that's why I want you to pray for your kids and your grandkids. Because the way you think it should be done is almost never the way God's going to do it. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done. Lord, let your kingdom come, your will be done in this church. Let your kingdom come, your will be done in each and every person's life. Let your kingdom come, your will be done in Pastor Ev's life. And all the people that's fighting COVID, of family members and people that we know here today. Lord, let your kingdom come, your will be done in Heidi's life. Touch her, Lord. I thank you for that. Let your kingdom come and your will be done for debt cancellation in people's life. You said it's coming, Lord, we take it. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. You know, I believe God's going to bring witty inventions and ideals and jobs and, and, and businesses to people's minds. Let your kingdom come and your will be done in that area, Lord. Because I don't know how to do it. You know, I, when I finally made the conclusion, I don't know how you heal people. I don't know how this works. I take someone with a bone spur in their foot. I punch them in the foot. They get up and say, the bone spur is gone. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> that looks pretty goofy. And a real religious person is like, that's not God. And I'm like, well, they're pain free. And I use the name of Jesus, the faith in the name of Jesus. How is it not God? Wow. They start trying to sell this stuff. I'm like, religion. Wow. It was become... Like a little child. You have to go back way before Common Core. Math. Amen. Come on. Let's preach that. Math teacher. <laughs> I pull my thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ Jesus. Devil, shut up. I pull my thoughts captive to the beatings. I'm going to think on things that are pure, that are just, that are holy, if there's anything of good report. You people that work in the medical field, you're seeing all these dying, sick people, uh, depression starts coming. I pull my thoughts captive in the name of Jesus. God says, he looks at death different than we do. He said, the death of his saints is a pleasure in his sight. I'm like, well, it ain't a pleasure in my sight. But... Pull your thoughts captive. Quit letting them run away. Quit getting offended by what somebody said or did in the church. The ability to pull your thoughts captive. I don't care how much scripture you can quote, or how much you read, how much you pray. If you can't pull your thoughts captive, you are not mature as maybe you possibly think you are. Wow. Yeah. See, I pastored here for 17 years, and you only had to deal with one of me. I had to deal with everybody. That's a whole lot different. And honey, I had to pull my thoughts captive. And to this day, I'll go places to preach. I'm like, I pull my thoughts captive. Thank you, Lord. Short-term people skills, short-term mission trips. Hallelujah. In and out, in and out. <laughs> in and out. But pull your thoughts captive. Then you don't have to put on a fake face. And a fake, a hypocritical face with, how you doing? Oh, I'm too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> then you're cussing in the car on the way home. <laughs> Kicking your dog. <laughs> I listened to people in the emergency room the other night. The people came out to talk to them. They're just, oh, yes, okay, thank you. Oh, you're so nice. Thank you, everything else. They walk back in. That is so me. Whoa. <laughs> Two face. Wow. And the medical people said, hey, man. Amen. People are going to die. People are going to be in car wrecks. Quit getting mad at God. He doesn't perform for you. You can't send him where you think he needs to go. He told you to go. You can't send him. Pull your thoughts captive into thinking that you become a Holy Ghost wizard. You can quote a few scriptures and wave your hand and poof is there. You're a person that needed to be born again. 
and your soul's not safe. So get to work on pulling your thoughts captive until you're thinking like Jesus. It'll save you so many headaches, man. Oh, yes. Yep. That's why you guys are still together, because you pull your thoughts captive, isn't it? Amen. You didn't jump on that too quick, did you? <laughs> Amen. Did you get anything tonight? Yes. Amen. That was three people, two raised eyebrows, and a partridge in a pear tree. Yes. I said, did you get anything tonight? Now remember, the Bible says bring all your tithe into the storehouse. So I'm back Monday. I'm expecting some cinnamon rolls, <laughs> the giant ones, deep fried veals. I want my 10%. <laughs> Guys, we love you. If anybody needs prayer, please come on up. We'll be more than happy to pray for you. You're dismissed. Have a wonderful weekend. And work on pulling your thoughts captive. And if your husbands and wives help each other, say, ah, pull your thoughts captive. Yeah. Mm. If you need any help, Ethel, I'll, I'll give you a call. <laughs> I know, I, you knew I was going to say that. God bless you. You're dismissed.